Hello, and with me today I have Vivi Hamel um, of Alta Vita. So welcome, Vivi. Thank you so much, Fiona. Thank you so much for having me in this incredibly beautiful um, garden of England. <laughs> That's a pleasure. <laughs> Lovely to see you here. So you've been having a meteoric rise, I think, <laughs> with uh, in corporate housing and uh, your business and all sorts of things. So congratulations on that. But tell me first how you got into this area and how it relates to global mobility. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my co-founder, Carolina Saviva, and I, we started Alta Vita about three and a half years ago. Um, we wanted to to come up with a very simple mission, which is to standardize and provide quality assurance to the Airbnb type of apartments. Uh, but we soon realized, very soon actually, that it was the corporate clients who really resonated with our, our unique value proposition. And so then began our research and we stumbled upon global mobility, which actually is very familiar to the both of us, myself for sure, because I was relocated um, as an assignee from New York to Hong Kong at the time by Santa Fe, and then from Hong Kong to London by Asian Tiger. So this the whole assignee journey felt extremely familiar to me. And um, that's how we started. And, it's been two years now since we've been with Global Mobility and very, very privileged and very happy and humbled to be in this incredible sector. So did you think you could do things better from your experience? Was I do it? hope so. Um, <laughs> yes, so, um, you know, as a tech founder, of course, what our um, mission is, is really to find that product market fit. That was the first thing, first and foremost. And we found it in this inefficiency processes. We saw that a lot of um, the corporate housing options were sent manually, copying and pasting, a lot, a lot of time with PDF, spreadsheet, email, um, not, not only on the corporate housing side, but also on the um, relocation management side. So when it comes to the assignee, sometimes it's very malformatted and you lose a lot of information, uh, whereas um, you know, actually there's a lot of information that can be useful for the assignee. So what we do at Aldevita is we use technology. Um, we integrate directly with property management system. So anything that has been inputted by the property manager, service apartment operator is seamlessly fed into our system systematically in the content. And of course we run through a very meticulous two tier quality control. It's essentially um, a, a thorough due diligence process that checks um, everything about the operator so we go from the background check, business continuity, insurance, how well they conduct um, incident uh, hospitality and then how they resolve incident management. Once they pass that process, um, we look at every single property to make sure every single property conforms and complies with corporate standards. And after that, um, we integrate as well with the um, relocation management system or their client facing system, really truly eliminating any manual processes from from the property manager all the way to the signee. So it's very seamless, but also it looks very nice because that's the Thank other you. thing. Thank <laughs> you. Yes. So the properties look very inviting. Yes. And they're not just corporate housing, is that right? You've got a mix yes. of Yes. Um, well, types. thank you for, for commenting on the look. We have very talented um, technology team and product design team, very proud of them. Um, and we usually develop a beautiful prototype in our tech team has been able to translate the process up into working products. So thank you so much for that. Um, yes, you're right. It's not just corporate housing. You know, we offer very diversified portfolio of assets. Um, so from service apartments, of course, um, professionalized unique homes, villas as well, um, apart hotels, hotels and co-living. Um, the reason why we have done that is because um, assignees sometimes are being sent to very remote locations. And in those remote locations, you don't find many um, professionalized uh, property manager or service apartments. And therefore, a hotel can be a balancing um, option for the assignees. And co-living is because we see that, um, you know, there's a big trend towards community-driven ecosystem that allows assignees to, to have both, you know, work from home amenities mm -hmm. and to be able to, to live and work, but at the same time have a community. So that's the, the trend that we have seen a lot, definitely during our recent um, APEC Rising Up webinars, where we we had uh, the to you know topics ranging from investor sentiment out of crisis to apartment of the future, um, trends driven by work from anywhere, as well as the um, smart home 
distribution technology. So it's really suitable for any generation, but are you finding that uh, perhaps younger international people are finding that, that this sort of co-living attractive? Yes, I think this is definitely um, a product that was originally created for the younger generation, Gen Z, Millennials, um, and not only popular in um, you know, metropolitan cities, but also growing now in even um, you know, second tier cities. Um, mm. And yes, they want, they are the digital first population, um, both on the booking site as well as on the, um, the guest journey. So it doesn't stop um, just after booking, right? It actually starts when they arrive at the property. So a lot of the, um, you know, kind of guest facing technology has evolved a lot more, definitely during COVID. It's beyond contactless. It's everything's, you know, basically done through their app, their mobile. Um, so from ordering the room service to also knowing um, sort of when, where guests are uh, so that they can do cleaning uh, seamlessly without you know having to knock and then uh, knowing that you know there's a guest inside and then you have to come back later on so so yeah it, it has evolved tremendously tremendously fast over the past 15 mm. months during the mm. pandemic and i understand you've been involved in a report and you're running an innovation summit so perhaps you can share some of the findings yes uh, that yes. you're noticing the trend Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, so yeah, Innovation Summit is um, our effort to bring product development transparently live to the public. Um, so we follow an agile development process from um, you know, crowdsourcing the problems. We had about 400 people attending our design thinking session. Um, and then we, bro we brought um, five different groups into focus group sessions, uh, five regions, five continents, and five different sets of problems. And we de de demonstrated a lot of prototypes. We got the feedback. And in a few weeks time, we're actually going to present the features we have been building since then. Um, the attendees will be able to test drive the feature um, themselves and, and we will house their feedback. And finally, product launch, um, fourth week of June. Wow. Uh, we would start from the US, um, East Coast, first day, second day EMEA, third day APAC, fourth day, uh, we go back to the US in the West Coast and then we end up, um, we find, we finish the whole entire three, four month event in Latin America. Oh and yes, findings. Um, I just released a report yesterday, actually on my LinkedIn, I wrote the article and there, there were six very a very interesting common themes, if I may just run through yes. those. Um, so uh, Laura Brun from AIR, she wisely said that um, we must not forget that 50% of relocation cases are complex and 50% are straightforward. Of course, with um, straightforward re relocation, then technology can fully assist the process. Um, I mentioned the manual processes can be taken out and you know fully seamlessly flowing into the different platforms and database. Um, but the human-centric approach is, is also important for those complex cases. Um, it can be pet relocation, family relocation, um, looking for safe and secure homes, so on and so forth. So, so, so in um, <laughs> as a tech founder, you must must highlight uh, the importance of human-centric approach. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there are other trends like pet relocations that are extremely trendy. Um, Alta Vita, we're seeing a big search of mm -hmm. um, relocation, uh, pet relocation, actually. So for your friends, it's not just one, sometimes multiple pets mm -hmm. and sometimes even plants, they, come, yes. they get relocated as well. So, so yeah, so those are, you know, two of the six founding findings that we found from, from the mm -hmm. whole Innovation mm -hmm. Summit. I remember being really surprised the first time I saw pets being coming into, <laughs> yeah. um, well, hotels even, but then into apartments. But yes, um, yes, yes, quite common. And I think now with since lockdown and uh, the uh, inf impact of the pandemic, people are wanting more and more pets. So it's a I, yeah, trend. Absolutely. Yeah, makes sense. And um, yeah, I, I do hope that the, um, you know, that the trend stays, but at the same time, um, <laughs> you know, I, I just heard a lot of horror stories yeah. about pet kidnapping and I, I do hope that doesn't continue. <laughs> Quite.
So on the um, other end of the scale, perhaps families, they can be very complex. And of course, in traditional global mobility, there has always been a shortage of family accommodation, mm. big enough with mm. space for children and spreading out an outdoor space. Yes. So how are you helping to solve that? Yes, so um, that's why I think, you know, having uh, the diversified portfolio of assets can be very useful um, so that the signees in their families can can choose not only like kind of um, what's the term box in the sky type of apartment but you know truly like a, a villa like this like a, a living space that can um, house their children and, and pets <laughs> comfortably um, yeah. during the first one or two months of their assignment because mm -hmm. I th we think that um, corporate housing, temporary housing is so important because it is truly the first impression that that the assignees feel of mm -hmm. how their relocation is going, right? Mm -hmm. it, it gives them a place not only to live now, but also to work. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's really an, becoming an anchor in, um, in my view anyway, in the relocation journey. Mm -hmm. And very important for retention of talent. Which yeah, is absolutely. So Spot on. Expensive. Spot on, spot on. Yes, yeah. yeah. So that comes again from your personal experience. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, 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 when I was relocated to London, um, my office was in Canary Wharf, but they, they put me in this gorgeous, beautiful <laughs> apartment in Canary Wharf. And I thought, wow, I think I might not want to move after this. <laughs> but, you know, of course, we, I moved to my tem uh, permanent place, which I love too. But it, it really made me feel... Yeah valued um, yeah. that my company was was giving me such a great um, option yeah. housing and option. so your properties are available for a short very short time or a longer period I mean what is the, yeah. the minimum stay so I mean the minimum stay is really two nights three mm. nights so uh, you know our platform allows users to book from two or three nights all the way up to six months, sometimes up to a year even. Um, they keep getting extended. Uh, so the, the trends that we were seeing sort of in the midst of the pandemic is that extensions were common and that stays were becoming longer. Um, with quarantine period, first 14 days, um, signees probably need another two or three weeks to, to find their home. So the average length of stay grew from less than 14 nights to, to over 14 nights, so 48, 49 days. And you're truly global. Tell us some of the regions you're in. Or? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, so this is why we think that sometimes the pandemic was actually quite a blessing for a small company like Alta Vita. Um, before the pandemic, we were present in many different cities in EMEA, but uh, we knew that um, we had to be global. We understood very early on the barrier to entry to this global mobility is to become global. Mm. So I, we uh, discussed with my co-founder Carolina uh, we said yes uh, the world is going under currently um, so we really streamline a lot of our operations uh, to the minimal but we went ahead with two things one we continued on with our um, supply acquisition uh, so we expanded to Asia Pacific Australia and the whole of Asia um, and the US Latin America and the MENA region as well during the pandemic so we went from a European company to truly global mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic we went from a mere nine people um, employees to now oh, I lose count honestly but perhaps over 25 people um, right now in the team mm -hmm. so and also the second thing we did was we we really continued um, building our system uh, we essentially launched our second generation of the system um, during the pandemic in September last year. Mm, brilliant. So just to summarise then, <laughs> how do you think this technology is helping and supporting global mobility? Yes, um, we are very um, API uh, driven technology. So um, as I mentioned earlier, um, our key differentiator is really integrating uh, the very fragmented property distribution market um, in the world and we integrate with their system so that their information flows seamlessly to ours. Um, as part of the Innovation Summit we're going to launch the first ever um, public API of corporate housing and our goal and vision is truly to connect um, the fragmented um, distribution system between corporate housing to relocation management companies. So our open API can be integrated uh, very easily and, um, and it gives 
RMCs or DSPs instant access to one million properties that we have in the database, okay. fully vetted, um, and um, we also do like a another layer of inspection 24 hours before a signee arrives and um, all of that, those reports. We would like to also <clears throat> um, launch a feature that could seamlessly allow those reports to be accessible by relocation consultants so that they can access it before a signee arrives or if there is any issue, it's something that they can refer back to. So it makes, them e makes it easier for auditing anything um, or management of the escalation. Mm. So cost savings, time saving and of course absolutely. Um, helping with risk and uh, health and security Absolutely, well. absolutely. And I think what's most important actually is to, to highlight that we would like to remove the manual processing, the copying and pasting so that consultants or any stakeholders within this industry can deliver higher value work. Mm. And of course you mentioned people and of course you also have people behind your systems who are helping and engaging yes. with everyone. Do you just Absolutely. want to say a little bit about that? Yes, we have incredible team um, of um, reservation account management. They are truly the, the heart of the culture of Alta Vita. Um, they are very thoughtful, empathetic. I, you know, um, there's Carolina, Caroline, uh, Tara, Tiana, Denise, Danny, as well as um, Nick in Singapore. So, so yeah, so very, very blessed to have them because they are um, really the front runners. They, they are the ones who shape um, our culture and um, and showcase the the thoughtfulness uh, not only of the system but the whole company culture. Mm. Well, thank you very much. That's been fascinating <laughs> and all the best with your growth plans. Thank you so much, Fiona, for having me here. Um, this has been such a pleasure and I've enjoyed the day and I um, look forward to being here again. <laughs> and you'll be very welcome. Thank you.